Okay, welcome back. And we're going to talk about something that I have uh, seen patients come in with and there's not a lot of information out there. Um, most of our energies have been directed towards getting people vaccinated and uh, trying to keep people out of the hospital. But there's, a, there's another situation, and we've talked about it before, and it's called long COVID, AKA long haulers. So today I wanna to talk about the research that has been done and why people are experiencing long hauler syndrome. Today we're going to talk about these three mechanisms by which the, some of the top researchers around the world think that long, why people have these long COVID symptoms that go on for months. And one of the latest uh, mechanisms, which was really surprising, showed that there may be persistent virus in the GI tract. That could be a challenge to uh, try to treat if these people are continuing to have uh, symptoms ongoing. And we know that 25 to 30% of the people that were COVID positive are long haulers now. So we got a significant amount of people in the United States that are experiencing fatigue, headache, uh, muscle ache, brain fog, memory, shortness of breath. That is one mechanism. Uh, the fact that there may still be persistent viruses in the GI tract. The second one involves the mast cells, M-A-S-T cells. And uh, we've mentioned that about the mast cells in the past. And we know that whenever our bodies are infected by any a type of bacteria or virus, mast cells are uh, released. They start to secrete histamine along with a thousand other inflammatory mediators. And so these mast cells that are uh, triggered when the virus comes in, the thought is that these uh, patients that have the long ongoing persistent symptoms their mast cells are stuck in a uh, situation where they are continuing to pr produce these inflammatory mediators and this histamine. Uh, you've heard uh, mention maybe the cytokine storm. The mast cell is involved in that because if you get these cells that produce these inflammatory um, mediators and also histamine, then you're going to be in a situation where you're just going to have continued inflammation of the different organs, the, the lungs, the heart, the stomach, the brain. That's one mechanism that has really uh, gotten a lot of attention and a lot of research is going into how we can make and treat that situation. The third way is um, there's a molecule called uh, ATP in the cell, in the nucleus of the cells, and ATP gives us our energy. Any of the people that are looking at this video uh, that have had any kind of biology or basic biology may remember that uh, ATPs are where we get our energy from. And so if you cut off the ATP production in the body, then you will have a person that is gonna feel a lot of different uh, symptoms. Uh, their energy, along with other symptoms that ATP drives will start to show up. Once the body realizes that ATP, we got, we have, we're leaking energy, it goes to another source. That source is tryptophan, and tryptophan is uh, pulled into that reaction to try to to make the ATP that we need for energy. What happens is when you take, when you decrease the amount of tryptophan in the system from this, from another system in the body, that decreases serotonin, and then that in turn de uh, increases or activates the mast cells. We're trying to figure out why people have these persistent symptoms for months and months and months. 
And so I've given you the three mechanisms that uh, the, re the researchers around the world feel are responsible for that. A lot of attention hasn't been uh, geared towards the long haulers. Um, it's been geared towards trying to keep people from becoming infected. I see patients in the, in the clinic um, and they have these persistent ongoing symptoms and we do labs on them, everything, everything comes back normal. Initially that was a little challenging, but the, the deeper we look into this, we're finding out that there's a little bit more to the picture than, um, than what we thought. So let's talk a little bit, just a, a little bit about that mast cell. Two of the mechanisms lead to mast cell activation. Anytime our bodies are infected, whether it's a bacteria, a virus, or fungus, the mast cells, which are in, in all the cells of our bodies, the mast cells are activated. When you have a situation like that where you have mast cells stuck, stuck in secretion, it's just stuck in secreting these, uh, the histamine and these other inflammatory uh, modulators, then that's, you can see where if you just, the, the mast cell is just continuing to push out the histamine, push out all these inflammatory cells, long after the virus is gone. So, so we have, remember we have two problems. We have the infection of the virus initially, and then even once the virus is gone, we think, then you have this immune system, this hyper uh, overdriven overdrive of the immune system where it's continuing to produce, produce all these cells. And so that's where we need to direct our treatment for the long haulers. The patients that have been put in this, to this long haulers uh, group when they have this overabundance of histamine, they can experience fatigue, headache, GI symptoms, insomnia, rashes, anxiety, depression, shortness of breath, runny nose. These are all um, effects of having too much histamine in the system. And so we now know that in order to try to help the long hauler patient, we have to direct our treatment towards the, hit, the mast cell, shutting it down, the mast cell, and also remember the ATP, that enzyme that stops the ATP production. We, those are two areas that we can kind of treat or direct our treatment at in terms of helping, helping the long hauler patient. One of the things that helps bring that enzyme back up is giving the patient niacin, okay? Because niacin will help stimulate that chemical reaction to get the ATP. Uh, it's vitamin B3, and so you can buy that over the counter. Typically, the, the do, do, there's various, um, there's various uh, dosages that, you, that it comes in. I would recommend that you talk to your primary care physician. I typically um, start my patients out on low, low dose, 25 milligrams twice a day, move them up to three times a day, um, and then maybe four times a day. If they tolerate that, we move it up again. So, so we titrate that niacin up slowly because we don't wanna overwhelm our physiology or our immune system. What else do we do? Okay, so in terms of the histamine, we want to direct our treatment toward the histamine. So the first thing we would want to do is um, an antihistamine. I would highly recommend that you talk to your family physician about the antihistamines and get both type 1 and type 2 on board. Vitamin C is also an antihistamine. Uh, vitamin C should be also on board along with vitamin D. Um, to try to temper this situation, especially with the long haulers uh, that are having these symptoms that don't seem to want to go away. So let's go back over the treatment. Niacin, type 1, type 2, antihistamine, vitamin C, vitamin D, 
zinc, curacetin, and selenium. Go to your primary care doctor, talk to them about these vitamins that we've mentioned. Hopefully, um, I have uh, given you some information that can help you to understand at least where the research and where the treatment is headed. We'll probably do a part two to this and try to get um, more clear and more information to you to help you deal with the long haulers symptoms. For now, um, if, you, uh, if you got some information out of this uh, video, click the like button. If you want to know more about this information, make a comment in the comment section below. And as we move forward, you can become a subscriber to our channel and we will continue to give out information involving COVID-19 and all its many facets. Thanks, we'll see you next week.